Bobby. Uh, I want to thank once again all of our faithful listeners that listen every Sunday and thank WLAF radio station for making this time possible for us and uh, what a blessing that they are to this community, getting the gospel out and Christian music and for everything that they do to promote the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, going to be back in uh, final, our final message from Revelation chapter 20, uh, verses 1, 2, and 3. And if you want to be a part of that, you uh, Bible reading as we read along, you can turn your Bibles to that. But we'll take just a minute to tell you where we're located and invite you out to our church. We're at uh, 199 Myers Lane. Easy to find. Just go to the Food Line store and turn down the road that runs between Food Line and Dollar Store, and you can see the church ahead of you. 10 a.m. for our Sunday school. We've got classes and teachers for all ages of kids. We've got uh, church Sunday morning service at 11 a.m., Sunday evening at 6 p.m. Wednesday night Bible study is at 7 p.m., and our youth meet at 6 o'clock. And uh, our youth are certainly a blessing. We've got wonderful uh, directors and, and leaders and teachers, got classes for all ages. So if you want your child involved in something uh, that's church-related and uh, is biblically sound, uh, just bring them out. Uh, we love to, for y'all to come out and visit. And just, uh, as they say, just take us for a test drive and just see what you think. Uh, I believe that you'll be well pleased. But uh, come out to church. If you don't have a home church, we'd love to have you come out and be in service with us. And if you do have a home church, uh, you want to go to your pastor, be expecting you. So uh, Revelation chapter number 20 and beginning verse number 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of a bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. Let us pray. Father God, as we bow before you, thanking you so much for the gift of this day, the opportunity to stand, proclaim your precious word, to break open the bread of life. Father, we pray, God, as the message goes out through the radio station into the homes, we pray, Lord, that if there's any one listening, anyone in that home, that today would be the day they receive Christ as their Savior. Father, we pray for every home, every marriage, every family, every child, every husband, every wife. God, that you would bless each and every one. We pray that you would strengthen, strengthen those, Lord, who are under attack. The devil would like much to separate husbands and their wives, would uh, alienate children from their parents, and he'd like to destroy what everything God has put together. Father, we pray for your protection upon every marriage and every home and every child and parent. Lord, we pray for our first responders. God, we pray for our police, firefighters, EMTs, rescue squad. We pray for doctors and nurses. We pray for our military. We pray for our firemen. Lord, we pray for each and every one that uh, puts their life on the line. Father, we pray for those who do their best to save lives. And, Lord, we pray that you'll bless them for their efforts. And, Lord, where it is, one has passed on, we pray, God, that you would comfort those who have given everything that they have to try to save that life. God, we pray for every church that gathers together in your name. We pray for every preacher, every pastor, every Sunday school teacher. Father, we also pray for all of our military as they serve this country and they fight for our freedom and for our liberty. God, we pray that you'll bless them and give them a victory in everywhere that they are. We pray, God, for the remainder of this service this day. God, that you would just bless this message, anoint it from upon high. Give us the words to say, discernment of the word and wisdom. We'll be careful to give you praise, honor, and the glory for it all. For it's in Christ Jesus' precious holy name we pray, and amen. I began this a few weeks ago, dear friend, about an angel that came down from heaven. I do believe it be Michael the archangel and how he laid hold on the dragon. And he took authority through the authority of the Jesus Christ, the archangel, Michael, the angel, 
uh, took a hold and authority over the devil. It's not the first time he's ever done it. He's did it over a dispute of Moses. He and his angels have fought against the devil and his angels for countless years. And then he went to bind him. Now, we hear a lot of times over the years where this one and that one, it says they bind the devil and seems like uh, the devil's never been really bound, but this time he is. This time God sent an angel that actually did bind that devil, which means he took control over him. He took his freedom away from him, and he bound him with a chain, and he's going to be bound for a thousand years. No getting out early, no early parole, no getting out for the weekend. He is bound in the bottomless pit for 1,000 years until the end of that 1,000 years, and he's going to be loose just a little while. But he was cast, literally thrown into the bottomless pit. No mercy, no remorse. The devil getting exactly what he he's, is deserving of. He's been a liar. He's been a murderer. He has destroyed churches. He has destroyed homes. He's destroyed marriages. He's destroyed lives. He's destroyed countries and kingdoms. And the Bible says that a seal was set upon him. Just as God marked Cain, the devil gets a mark. Just as the Antichrist the, uh, commanded a mark so that you could buy or sell and living in his kingdom, God's putting a mark upon the devil. He's been identified. He's been tried. He's been found guilty. So I want to finish this message up. No more deceiving the people. You think about something in the world that we live in. You think about the things that are promoted on TV commercials and movies and TV shows and, and what a mess that that stuff brings into our homes and to our minds and in our hearts and the things that we see on TV and that are heard and uh, the things that are allowed that were never allowed years ago and it seems like uh, that they're trying to indoctrinate our families and our kids and uh, they're trying their best to, st to steer us away from the Bible and from godly living and making godly decisions. But deceiving the people. The devil's got America deceived into alternate lifestyles and transgender this and, and gender confusion on something else. And he's trying to take our kids away from us and take control of our kids even as young as the first grade. And they're trying to teach our kids that whatever they want to do, whatever they dream up, whichever decision they make, doesn't matter what the Bible says, doesn't matter what the church says, doesn't matter what the preacher preaches, doesn't matter what God's intent or God's instructions are. None of that stuff matters. Just do what you want to. And they're starting at a young age. And what they're doing is they're making it harder to reach our young people. They're getting their minds filled with all these ungodly uh, thoughts and behaviors behaviors and uh, their, their perception of right and wrong doesn't line up with the Bible anymore and everybody's doing uh, what's right in their own sight not what the word of God says and that's deception the de devil's got this world and especially this country thinking that the Bible is outdated, it's null and void, it's really not the Word of God anymore, and, and the preacher's just preaching an opinion and not what God says, and they're, they're trying to take our young people away from us, and they're not waiting until they're teenagers or young adults. They're trying to steal their mind uh, when they're still just in the first grade. They're six and seven years old, five years old, and they're trying to confuse them. And they're trying to take away the authority of the parent and the authority of the word of God. You just look at, at what the devil has made available. You just look at the availability of alcohol, if nothing else. I mean, you can buy it at pretty much every grocery store. You can buy it at every convenience store, gas stations. I mean, I believe they sell more beer than they do gas. And you're going you're gonna to find that uh, the availability of something that you can put in your body and deem that it's right and it's okay is, is so readily available. I mean, that people got it on every hand, everywhere you stop. You got availability to beer and liquor and all that other things. And if you look at just something like Gatlinburg, 
Gatlinburg used to be a place where you could take your family and you didn't have all this that you have uh, in front of you anymore. The world is now accepting things uh, that we called sin and we called wrong. It's now being accepted. It's available every which way you turn, every which way you look. You just look again at the commercials. They'll show you how happy and how successful and and by holding a, a mixed drink in your hand or a cold beer or something and, and how happy that they are and, and how how uh, your life would be better if you drank this certain type of beer and if you just have this certain type of lifestyle and everything's good. But see, what they don't show you and what the devil doesn't want you to know is all the abuse and all the hurt and all the tears and all the fear. He, <coughs> the devil doesn't want you to see all the broken homes and the broken heart all the t- children running because they don't know what kind of shape daddy's going to be in when he comes home. The devil doesn't show you all that. He tries to ma- mislead and make you believe that if you'll, you'll just do the things that you see on TV, that's going to bring happiness to you. You're going to have a better marriage. You're going to have happier kids. You're going to have a better life, a better life and a better home. And he doesn't show you the destruction that comes with that because you see, you don't really control, um, uh, the, this, the sin the sin begins to control you you don't really can you may start out just like they show on tv and it may work for just a short while but then the sin that you bring into your body and the sin that you bring into your home and into your mind it begins to control you and the next thing you know you're out of you're completely out of control and that once what was supposed to have been a happy marriage and a happy home is now been utterly destroyed because the sin that the devil convinced you of is that you, you You find out that the devil lied to you the whole time. He didn't tell you what would happen when it began to control you. So commercials that show alcohol and happiness, they ain't showing you the truth. They're not showing you what happens after a while. They're not showing you what happens when you begin to love that drink more than you love your family, more than you love yourself, more than you love God. They don't show you all that. So the devil is deceiving this world into thinking that sin is going to make you happy. Sin is going to be what you've been looking for. It's going to be the missing part of your life. And if you'll just do what you see people do on TV and on the movies and on the uh, situation comedies and on the shows and that looks like everything's by it couldn't be any better, you're going to find that what the devil didn't tell you and try, he tried to keep from you and what he substituted the truth was the fact is the happiest life you'll ever live is the life of a saved person who is serving the Lord Jesus Christ who is faithful to their church who has a prayer life and a Bible study and your decisions are made on what thus saith the Lord from the word of God, that's what the devil doesn't want you to know. He's trying to keep you away from church and keep you away from the Bible, and he's trying to keep you away from the things of God that will let you grow up and lead a godly life and raise your children to be faithful to God and believe that this Bible is the truth. I mean, the devil's even got people who are professing Christians all around this country into saying that the Bible's not the word of God, the Bible's not true truth it's just a bunch of stories for a different time made up by people who just gave their opinion listen you've got to believe this bible is the word of god it's inerrant it's infallible it has no mistakes in it this is the truth this is god wrote this book to give us uh the truth and only different the only uh well, the only thing that tells us the truth, the only uh, information that we got, and the only source of truth we have in this world, dear friend, is this blessed book. It tells us the difference between right and wrong, between truth and a lie, between the God and the devil, and between heaven and hell. You see, when he, he can't deceive the people, there's no more getting hooked on all this drugs and stuff. I mean, it may start out, you're going to experiment, you may just try this out, and the next thing you know, you're a full-blown drug addict. And the devil, he never tells you that starting out. It, you'll be able to control it. It'll just kind of help you through the day. It'll take the edge off. But what he doesn't tell you is that once these drugs get in your body and in your mind, they begin to control you. I've seen good people, godly people, 
get started on different types of drugs and 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 things and the next thing you know uh, they're not married anymore they're living on under a bridge and they're holed up somewhere they're not living the life that they once lived and their families in sh- their families in shambles and they're in a mess and you see the devil doesn't tell you what can happen whenever sin begins to control you if you remember what we got going on in all the competition in this world <clears throat> do you remember that time and, and Samuel, that uh, the Philistines stole the Ark of the Covenant? Have you ever thought about how could it be that God's people would become so weak that the Philistines could take the most cherished thing that they had in that day, and that was the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant meant God's presence. The Ark of the Covenant meant victory in a battle. The Ark of the Covenant was when the Ark showed up, the enemy was automatically defeated. But God's people had gotten so far away from God that the Ark showed up, but God did not. And the next thing you know, the Philistines have the Ark of the Covenant, and they place it right in their temple by the the old fish god, Dagon, that they worshipped. And God's people were powerless to do anything about it. You know the story. Uh, God knocked the statue of Dagon over. They picked it back up. And the next day, God broke it in all kinds of pieces. What I'm trying to tell you this morning, dear friend, is that the devil has got this world believing that Jesus is just one God among many, that he's just one way to heaven amongst different ways. And he's put Jesus on right on the on the same level with Buddha and Muhammad and Allah and ever and whatever else is going on there. He's even got people uh, convincing just men, deceivers, wicked men, deceiving him into thinking they're God, they're Jesus here on earth, and these. And that's how the cults become so successful as people quit believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as the only true and living Savior. They quit believing that this Bible is the only truth and they started taking up different sources and thinking that they're finding the truth. They're being deceived into into thinking that there's other gods other than Jesus. There is no other God other than Jesus. There's no way to the Father but by Him. There's no other name given under heaven that you can be saved but the devil has deceived the world into thinking that and he's even got those who teach that even if you die lost never being saved that at the resurrection then you have a chance to come out of the grave and and get born again then those are all lies those are all deceptive lies that the devil has people believing there's no truth to that and he is when he is locked up for a thousand years he cannot deceive the nations there's a thousand years that jesus is king of kings and lord of lords sits on the throne of david in jerusalem and rules his kingdom which is the entire world and the world for one thousand years will not be deceived by the devil they know that's jesus on the throne they know he's the son of god they know he's the savior of the world they know that there is no other king than the lord jesus christ but the devil's going to be loosed after the end of a thousand years but would it not be great If he was bound right now, would it not be great if he was put a place where he couldn't deceive the people that they'd have a clear picture of that Jesus is the only true Savior? Wouldn't it be great if they had a clear picture that this word of God really is the truth? Wouldn't it be good that he wouldn't deceive you into whatever you saw on TV or what you saw some popular athlete or actor or musician do that you would know that it's not right? Wouldn't it be great to have a time where everybody's head could be cleared and the devil wouldn't have influence over the nation? Wouldn't it be great to know that he wasn't uh, causing rebellion in the heart of our own children and he wasn't causing rebellion in the hearts of the saved that they would move away from God? Would it not be great that we would live in a time where you didn't have to worry about the Jim Joneses of this world or the David Koresh's or the Sun Moon Young and the Moonies of this world? Is that when the preacher got up and preached that Jesus Christ is the only true Savior, he's the only true God, the Bible's the only word of God there is, and people would believe it because they wouldn't have the influence of the devil? Would it not be great? Well, God is going to give this world that opportunity 
that they can't be deceived. The nations, the entire world will not be deceived by the devil and he would have one opportunity for a thousand years in his kingdom to, for the world to know he's the true and the living God. I mean, you just look at the at the uh, God's people when they were in 400 years in bondage of Egypt, just what they were surrounded by, hundreds of false gods. God sent ten plagues. <clears throat> God let Pharaoh know and the Egyptian people know and his own people know He's the one true and living God. But they were surrounded and influenced by the false gods of Egypt. That's one of the problems that we have in this world today and in this nation that we live in. There are too many other false gods that are offered. You have one true God, Jesus, but you've got hundreds of false gods in this world. People follow fame and pride and greed and they follow musicians and athletes and rich millionaires and billionaires and successful businessmen and actors. They're influenced that they want to follow everybody except the Lord Jesus Christ. And thank God there's going to be a time in this world, and it'll be the first time that you don't have the devil tearing up pawns by his influence. He's not tempting sons and daughters. You have a time where you can't blame the devil on divorce or fussing or fighting. There'll be a time where the devil can't cause the child abuse in the home. There'll be a time where the, there's no more abduction and people and children don't come up missing. No more DUIs and, and drug addicted things. It's, it's the violence, the junk that you see on the internet. All the bullying that takes place, thank God the devil is going to be arrested and he won't be able to influence him. Now, I, <coughs> excuse me, I understand that the Bible says he must be loosed just a short while, just right at the end of the thousand years. But look at verse number 9 and 10. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Who are the them that the Bible is talking about? I know I skipped ahead. It's those when the devil was loosed, he gathered up a small remnant of people and convinced them, just like he convinced a third of the angels in heaven to follow after him. And it was those who have never surrendered their will nor their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ as the King of kings and the Lord of lords convinced them that with one final push they could overthrow that king and the devil would take back over and run this world for all of eternity. But you notice what happened. Uh, they decided to uh, form an army and march against the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, they surrounded the beloved city, Jerusalem, and then fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Does that sound familiar? Go back to Sodom and Gomorrah. And God rained down fire and brimstone. God's not putting up with it. At the battle of Armageddon, he's already defeated the wicked forces. He's already defeated the armies of the Antichrist and the devil. And this time God says, I'm done fighting with y'all and just rain fire down out of heaven. But look what happens next. In verse 10, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and with brimstone. We had a missionary to Israel here at the church last Sunday, and he had a little jar with brimstone in it, and that has to be the stinkingest stuff, and it's over 2,000 years old, and uh, it still smells just as bad today as it did when it fell. But what I'm trying to get to you is all those that follow after false prophets, all that follow after false gods, all them that had been deceived by the devil, here's where your leader and your God is. He was deceived. He was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, and the beast, the Antichrist was there, the false prophet that tried to direct everyone to worship the Antichrist and ever told everyone he was the one true God and take his mark and uh, follow after him and you'll live forever. And this is the God you've been reading about, the God that you heard about. It's really him and people were deceived. And you're going to find out 
entirely too late, no repentance, no mercy, no grace, no second chances, salvation has come and gone, and you're going to find that the God you believed in was a false God. It was the devil impersonating what you were looking for. Instead of believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are going to find that it is too late to do anything about it. In verse 10, the Antichrist and the false prophet, they're all in to the lake of fire where they will be tormented forever and day and night. Every torment that the devil put the church through, every torment that the devil ever put every family through, every torment that he ever put every nation through, he is paying for his sin, if you will. He's, God is gonna, has kept account. He's kept a record. He knows every time the devil has influenced someone. He knows every time the devil's put rebellion in someone's heart. He knows every time that someone's attacked the church or the preacher or the preaching or anything and the devil was behind it and the devil is now having to pay for that <coughs> you see God knows what he's doing God knows who he's doing it to God knows every single thing and every home that was destroyed the devil is now in the lake of fire because of it and he goes all the way back to heaven when he disrupted heaven and encouraged a third of the angels to follow him as God he, God goes all the way back to Eden when he corrupted the first husband and wife, the first marriage the first family, God goes all the way back to the flood of Noah where he corrupted mankind, he goes all the way back to Cain and Abel that the Bible says Cain was of his father the devil and murdered his own brother he goes back and from that time of the beginning even before there was a beginning up until the, up, he was arrested everything that he's done God is putting him into the lake of fire and he is going to torment the devil like the devil tormented us and God has not blinked God has not winked God has not turned his head he is going to make sure that the devil is locked up into the lake of fire, never to be released. It's not a thousand-year sentence in the lake of fire. The Bible says that he will be tormented day and night forever and ever. That means there is no end to the torments and in the suffering. That's good to know, isn't it, that God didn't let the devil get by with nothing that he's done to his church and to humanity. I want to thank you so much for tuning in this morning and listening. Uh, God bless you. Uh, hope to see you at church. Once again, invite you to come out to Mountain View Independent Baptist Church. We'd love to have you in service with us. God bless.